This video is brought to you by the supporters on Patreon. Hi guys, I'm here with a video showing you how I made the turn up hat for my Daisy May cosplay and I'm just going to get right to it because the video's already started. So to start off, I took this large cut or thick cut of foam batting and this is about 5 inches thick and I got 6 inches of it. This is normally very expensive, I mean it's like either 80 or or $100 per yard, however this was on sale so it only cost me like 5 bucks. And I cut that into four pieces, four pieces because I need three turnips for the hat and I wanted one turnip just to hold. I believe the end measurements of all these pieces were like five by five by six or something along those lines. I can't remember at this moment, however, I do have an ebook and this is a great time to mention it. I do have an ebook with step-by-step -step details and photos and it's super in-depth about how I made my entire Daisy May cosplay and by the time you're seeing this video, it might be up online, however, I'm not completely sure. If it's not, it will be soon. I drew up a really basic turnip shape on a piece of paper and then traced that onto four sides of these foam blocks, uh, whatever sides you think are best. It doesn't super matter because you'll be cutting away most of the foam anyway. So as I just mentioned, you'll then cut away most of the foam using this as a guide to get your shapes. I used a box cutter and then a pair of scissors to shape the foam batting. You're going to want to make sure that your box cutter is super sharp, otherwise you're going to have a very hard time cutting through this. If it is sharp, this should be as easy as slicing butter it was for me. And basically all of this is just kind of reliant on sculpting skills. There is no real like super specific way to explain quite how I do this. You just want to use your guide as a reference and start carving the foam into a turn up shape, rounding out all of the squared corners, rounding out the top and bringing the bottom to a point. You want to take away a little at a time because if you take away too much, there's no going back. But if it helps, I will note that I started by taking away the foam at all of the corners and cutting away a majority of that and then taking away the foam or a majority of the foam at the bottom to shape it into a point or a like pyramid shape. And then I went through and just kept carving away little by little to round out everything as much as possible. I should note that it most likely won't be perfectly smooth, but that's okay because we can kind of fix that later. Now the first time I did this, I messed up. I made and wasted time cutting out and making fabric covers. However, because my foam batting was green, even with two layers of fabric, the green still showed through. It was very green. So I scrapped that entire idea and started over and decided I had these plaster strips lying around, why not use those? So that's what I did. I took these plaster strips and coated the turnips in that. I really like the way that this turns out. It made it a lot more durable and I was a lot more happy with the end results. All I did was follow the instructions that come on the box of plaster strips, which is basically just to dip the strips in water and stick them onto whatever you're trying to stick them onto and smooth out the plaster with a little bit of water as well to kind of feel it, fill in the holes in the netting and let it dry. Other alternatives would be paper mache, which is totally fine and probably a lot cheaper because it's just newspaper, water, and glue. And then for the foam batting, you can even substitute it with insulation foam. However, insulation foam board uh, doesn't get quite as thick from what I've seen. So you're probably going to need to glue a few slabs of board together and then carve it away to get it to be the right thickness. The boards are normally about one inch thick. And I should also note that I'm using the heat gun to dry it faster because at this point I was a little bit rushing because I just, I wanted to be able to cosplay her already. So I'm new to plaster. I'm not the best at making it smooth and it shows. So to try to fix some of the gaps in the netting and just smooth 
things out a little bit and smooth out the the seams between layers or strips of the plaster. I use Bonda's Spot Putty, Spot and Glazing Putty, which is basically just a gap filler. Wood filler and stuff works exactly the same. And I just spread that all over the turnip, let that dry, and then sanded it. I know it might be weird that I'm sanding in a plastic bag, but that made for some really easy cleanup. Usually when I sand these things, it gets everywhere, and I'm cleaning up this for days. However, this made it a lot more easier. It kind of contained most of the sanded particles, and I, I didn't have to worry about it getting all over my desk. Once this was sanded, I wanted to make sure everything was sealed, especially since the plaster likes to crack a little bit, so I coated it in a few layers of wood glue and then moved on to painting. And I painted it with a spray paint primer base color of white and then added on my airbrush color. You can totally use acrylic paint instead of an airbrush to do this as well. But what I basically did was just color the top of the turnips a light green and I made a gradient so that it got a little bit more darker in the center, however not too dark. I still wanted it to be a very bright yellow green color. I could find were brown on the back and a very dark green. These are the only ones that I could find large leaves of at my local stores and I didn't want to have to try to search online so I just used what I had and painted them to be the green that I needed which was a much more brighter yellowish green. And I used my airbrush for this originally however I eventually switched to just paint on the colors with acrylic paint and a paintbrush because that just went a little bit quicker. I know airbrushing seems like it would be quicker, however my airbrush did not like this paint no matter how much paint thinner I added to it. So I still got th some things to learn apparently, which was pretty obvious. But anyways, I, I went back to good old normal acrylic paint and a paintbrush to paint the rest of the leaves. I also used floral tape to rebundle up the leaves so that they had a much more even amount per, per each like turn up. They weren't pre-bundled in a way that worked for me, so I just cut the leaves off of the main little branch thing they're all attached to and then rebundled those. And then I stuck those into the turnips. And I did this by using something sharp to poke a hole, a small hole into the top of the turnip and then something a little bit bigger, like the end of a paintbrush, to poke it a little bit larger. And then even if it doesn't seem like it's large enough for the turnip stems to turnip leaf stems whatever to go into uh, the turnip uh, the, the stems will eventually like open that hole up more when you just shove them in and then they'll be the right size and they'll stay pretty secure however if you want to secure it further you could totally use a hot glue I took some red string and strung it through this bread basket that I found online. This bread basket was not big enough, which is why the back of it is cut open and I hide that later. You'll see in a little bit how I do that. But for now, I'm just stringing red string through and I did string it differently than it, um, her reference photos show it is. Like they're just tied to four corners of the basket. I strung it in like an X shape through the bottom of the basket because I didn't super realize that in reference photos and also I felt this was a little bit more secure too in the end. Next you'll want to figure out your turnip placement and then glue them in. I glued them in using hot glue and they stuck really well. I wanted very big and oversized cartoony looking turnips and that meant they were obviously going to just kind of have to float above the basket because they didn't sit in it. However, that does look a bit weird. So to fix that problem and make it look a little bit less odd looking, I filled in the bottom of the basket with a bunch of leftover fake leaves that I had from a previous 
fake flowers that I bought. I always save leaves and extra flowers, so I just had a giant bag of those lying around, and I used those and glued those in using hot glue, and I made sure to glue some to the bottom of the floating turnips to kind of make it look like the turnips are resting on a pile of leaves. I did this all the way around the basket and also used the leaves to conceal the cut open part on the back. Just a real quick explanation and apology, I'm so sorry about the quality of this video. The final video got corrupted on export by Premiere and I had actually not had the original files at that point anymore by the time that I realized it because it played back on my computer fine so the only way to make this video happen was by screen recording the video playing on my computer and then editing and uploading that which is how it got to this quality. I hope that this video was educational and helpful anyways despite this and that you stick around for my future videos because trust me they are not this bad of quality they look much nicer so yeah thanks for watching anyways guys and hope you have a lovely day